about to see The world in action What we can be Life with no distractions We'll get away This is what we waited for Hi guys and welcome back to my channel and another Meals of the Week video So if you're new here my name's Vicky and I'm a mum of three boys and what I'm going to do is take you through what we've had for our dinners this week and some of the processes and how I make things and if I've got any recipes that I use I will leave them linked in the description box if you're not already subscribed I'd love to have you stick around I do a lot of food content on this channel lifestyle videos we're doing a lot of home makeovers which I'm sure most of you are doing at the moment because not a lot else we can be doing is there um, and we're also at the moment we're trying to upload an extra video a week whether it's a weekly vlog um, we're actually going to be filming a Q&A video as well soon so if there's anything you've always wanted to ask and it's not in the videos we've already put up then please leave me your questions because I would love to hear from you and Steve and I are going to sit down and we're going to do a really chatty fun kind of Q&A so you know really dig deep and <laughs> Hobbs is there. here he goes again um, so yeah really dig deep and see if there's anything it can be food related or it can just be something completely nosy because um, I love these kind of videos so leave your comments and your questions down below and then we'll get around to doing that so yeah I do food hauls as well and at the moment like I said we're also doing some family vlogs just to try and document this time and also to keep connected with you guys because I know you're enjoying seeing what we're up to and I love all your comments and interacting with you so without further ado let's get into what we've had this week we have got roast pork for tonight's dinner with roast potatoes we've got broccoli roasted carrots leeks and Yorkshire puddings and gravy and they're all pretty much the same that's Oscar's that's Steve's over there Hobbs is trying to get out like he always does when we have a roast dinner that's mine and that's what we've got for our dinner tonight so for our next meal I just did some easy sweet chilli salmon, this is the Encona sweet chilli sauce and I just defrosted some salmon fillets and poured the chilli on the top. I then covered them in foil and cooked them in the oven for around 10 minutes, then I uncovered them so that the sweet chilli sauce sort of caramelised a little bit and I served the boys ones over noodles. Steve and I had our avocado, chilli, red pepper and spring onion salad where we had lots of lime juice and coriander and we have this salad with a lot lately and we served ours on a little bit of mashed potato. So I'm just about to make some sage and onion sausage rolls with some caramelised onion chutney. I've just got some sausages, these are just plain like little ones. Pack of stuffing mixture, caramelised onion chutney also from Lidl and some Tesco ready roll puff pastry. So I've preheated my oven and the first thing I'm going to do is make up my stuffing mix as according to instructions. So it says pour the packet into the bowl. and add 425 ml of boiling water. This is the same way I make my sausage meat stuffing for like when we have roast dinners and for Christmas and things. But I'm just gonna put it in sausage roll form this time. We often just form this either into a loaf and slice it. The boys love it cold in sandwiches or with pickle. Or we roll it into balls and have it on roast dinner. It goes really nice with gravy and roast potatoes and things. So I'm just gonna mix that together. I'm not going to add butter, it says you can add a knob of butter if you want, but there's going to be fat from the sausages and the pastry and things, so I don't think it needs butter added, but it's up to you. I'm 
just going to set that to one side and now I'm going to skin my sausages into my bowl. So you can do this whatever way you want. You can either slice them and sort of peel them, like slice them down the middle or you can just squeeze the filling out. It doesn't make much difference. So next I'm just going to add my stuffing into my sausage meat and mix it together. my chutney along the middle of the sausage roll. And then we're going to put our sausage meat along the middle of that. We'll probably have enough here to make two of this pastry. going to cut just along the edges here right up to where my sausage meat is on both sides and then we're going to flat it and all we're going to do is fold one and then the other over. I'm just going to go along like that. Now you could brush this with a little bit of beaten egg or a little bit of butter, melted butter, and we're going to pop it in the oven. So I'm just going to brush mine with a little bit of milk just to glaze the top because I don't really want to waste an egg. <laughs> They're in quite a short supply and this will do the same job anyway at the moment. This will just give it a nice little bit of a shine and it will also help the pastry stick. So I'm just going to pop this in the oven for 15 to 20 minutes. So here's the sausage and chutney plat out of the oven and it looks really nice and smells amazing. And I'm just going to let it cool a little bit and then slice it up for some lunch. So for tonight's dinner I'm making a creamy Mexican chilli pasta bake. So I've just cooked some pasta and then I've got the chilli that I made, when did I make it? Last week sometimes. If you can hear a noise obviously you'll all know what I'm about to say, it's the dog with his bone. So I'm just going to, whoa, I'm just going to mix my chilli that I've got out of the freezer in with the pasta. I'm just going to mix it with this cream cheese and then I'll top it with mozzarella and cheddar, put it in the oven, and then we've got some garlic and cheese, I think it is, flatbread things to have with it. And it makes a really nice creamy pasta bake. And Hobbs is getting really annoying with that bone. <laughs> the oven and I'm just about to dish it up into some bowls obviously <laughs> but I thought I'd show you what it looked like before I plated it up and here it is dished up and I've just got some garlic and cheese herby flatbread thing to go with it creamy Mexican chili pasta bake so next I made some banana bread muffins I used the same recipe that I use in the slow cooker it's basically about three or four overripe bananas 
320 grams of self-raising flour and one tin of condensed milk and then you can add whatever other ingredients you want this time around i added some chocolate but i only had a chocolate santa left from christmas and i decided to use that because waste not want not although if you watch when i open it it actually had smarties inside which i didn't realize and they went everywhere i also put some chopped walnuts in this time as well and baked them in muffin cases and they took around 25 minutes at about 200 degrees in the oven and it was really really simple to do and it was nice having them in muffin cases because then you could just grab one individually Okay, so I'm just about to start making my butternut squash and spinach lasagna and the first thing I'm going to do is prep my butternut so I've got two sort of medium sized ones here or you can use one of the really big ones we'll leave the whole recipe typed out in the description box just in case you want exact measurements um, but what I'm going to do first is prick my butternut and then pop them in the microwave for about four or five minutes and then let them cool and what this does is if you've ever tried to peel a butternut squash and not taken your fingers off then I salute you. Um, this skin is really really tough and we're not using the skin in this recipe. You can eat the skin but I quite often find it goes quite tough um, and like quite quite tough and stringy I suppose. You can see all the moisture coming out of the butternut. Anyway so what I'm going to do is pop this in the microwave for four or five minutes and then once it's cooled the skin is so easy to peel off you can just use your peeler and it's not like trying to get through a lump of concrete. So that's the first step, microwave your butternut. So next up, I'm gonna make my sort of bolognese sauce, same as I would make for spaghetti bolognese. I have got a video on simple spaghetti bolognese and I will leave that linked in the description box. I've also got it highlighted on my Instagram page, which is just the Folger family. But these are the things I use to make my sauce. So I use one chopped onion, two chopped cloves of garlic, a tin plus a tin filled with water of plum tomatoes, a beef stock pot or cube, I've got cubes at the moment, um, salt and pepper, just a pinch of each for seasoning. I use a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. I use a tablespoon of basil. Um, I usually use dry. I've actually got my massive plants sitting there and it's got loads of leaves that need using. So I'm actually gonna put fresh basil in today. But like I said, I would normally use dried and some tomato puree and the only other thing I usually put in is a teaspoon of sugar. I'm going to start making my sort of, I suppose it's not a bolognese sauce is it? It's a ragu is it? Or like a tomato. It's a sauce that you'd use for spaghetti bolognese. I suppose people call it a ragu. I don't know. My red sauce. <laughs> Does anyone call ketchup red sauce? I used to when I was younger. It was always red sauce in my house. And then I grew up and now I call it ketchup like a posh person. <laughs> that brown a little bit. I don't want it on too high because I've got my garlic burned. Right, so I've got my butternut squash out. When I say starting to look a bit cooked, I mean like this. You see where it's going a bit bubbly and darker colour. It doesn't have to be all over. See that one? It's difficult in this light. I want my other one's gone <laughs> wandering. Um, but you can, you can just tell it's a bit softer. And what I'm going to do now is get a very sharp knife. You could use a peeler, but I'm going to actually just peel it using a sharp knife, like slice down the edges without wasting too much of it. I'm preheating my oven to around 200 degrees because um, we're going to roast this. Right. So I'm just going to start by cutting off the bottom. You can hear how um, tough it is, but it's a lot softer. It slices through. So mine's still very, very hot. I never leave anything to cool down as much as I should. And you'll just find that it's so much easier to cut through. Now it's softer. And you can just go very close to the actual inside of the butternut. So you just, just as if you were peeling it really. Don't want to chunk too much off because you'll waste it, but these are big old things anyway. So you've got a little bit of room for manoeuvre. 
Right, so I've done one, and what I'm going to do is if you cut into the bigger, wider part at the bottom, you'll see that it's filled with seeds. You can roast these um, a bit like pumpkin seeds. I'm just going to kind of hollow it out with my knife and get rid of that inner bit. You could probably use it to make a soup. I absolutely love roasted butternut squash and red pepper soup. Lots of garlic. So good. So you just want to get all that out. Right, and then we're just going to cube it up. And I'm going to put it on one of my pizza baking trays because it's got the holes in. It just helps it to caramelise. But if you don't have a pizza tray, then you can just put it in a normal baking tray. Again, with some spray oil. And I'm going to shake a little bit of garlic powder over it and some salt and pepper. I'm going to put it onto my tray. And so it's, it's one of those that's just got like the holes in for pizzas. Get that seed out. And then I'm just going to spray it. I'd say that'll take around 25 to 30 minutes until it starts to shrink and go nice and brown. But not burnt. Right, so while my butternut squash is in the oven, I'm going to add the rest of my ingredients to my sauce. So I'll empty a tin of tomatoes. I'm going to rinse this tin with water and add that as well. I'm going to put my beef stock cube in. There's quite a lot of liquid in there, so it's fine. Just break it into like quarters or something. And pop that in, that'll dissolve. Put about a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. So around two tablespoons of tomato puree. Some salt and pepper. And then I'm going to put some basil from my plant. I'm just going to tear up those roughly. I'm also going to add a teaspoon of sugar. It just takes away the acidity of the tomatoes. These plum tomatoes, you can cut them a little bit, but they will break down if you simmer this for long enough. So I'm going to bring it to the boil to get it nice and hot. Add my sugar. We could use sweetener. A teaspoon of sweetener if um, you don't want to use sugar. So next up I'm going to get 300 grams of frozen spinach. I'm just going to defrost it in the microwave for a couple of minutes. And then you need to get a really, really clean tea towel or some extra strong, like, industrial strength kitchen roll and squeeze every bit of moisture out of it that you can. You could use fresh spinach for this, but I've always used frozen, so there's 300 grams there. Right, so the next step is to make your filling. So I'm just going to squeeze out the moisture from my spinach. So what I've got is the bowl that I weighed the spinach in. And then I'm just going to put this clean microfiber towel in there. And put the spinach into it. You watch this, will probably dye it brown. And then I'm going to wrap it up into a little parcel. And you can see just how much moisture comes out. Just want to get as much of the moisture out as you can. All right, so you're going to get yourself a bowl and then you're going to just plop your little spinach bowl into it. Nice and technical, I'm going to put the towel in the wash. I'm just going to break it up a little bit. Next up, I want 300 grams of cottage cheese, which is one tub, basically. I don't know why I got two out. Um, I'm using the low-fat cottage cheese from Lidl. You could use a full fat one, whatever you'd rather. So I'm going to mix in the whole tub. I'm also going to add probably a good teaspoon of garlic granules or garlic powder, garlic salt, whatever you've got. Good seasoning of salt. I'd say probably between half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of salt. Same with pepper, it depends how much you like really. I'm going to put probably about half a teaspoon of pepper. You're also going to want to add one teaspoon of English mustard or English mustard powder. I haven't got any powder so I'm going to actually just use mustard. This is optional but it does tend to bring out the cheese flavour. Right, so next I'm going to add two laughing cow cheese triangles or dairyly triangles. These are actually little triangles. These are the light ones again. 
not my usual style of cooking I don't usually add like cheese triangles and things in but I've made it four years ago and it was absolutely lovely so now we're just gonna so at this point you should be adding 60 grams of grated cheddar cheese I completely forgot this step but we found we didn't need it anyway so it's up to you the recipe suggests you put it in but I didn't and I found it fine so I'll leave that choice up to you really combine that well most appetizing look right so we've mixed our spinach together what we're going to do now is get our sauce and we want to put down a layer i've got quite a long wide dish i would rather have a deeper dish but i don't have one i'm just going to spread it out a little bit on top of that i'm going to put some um pasta like lasagna sheets there's no need to pre-cook these just lay them on the top Right, so on top of this, I want to put about a third of our spinach mix. So what I'm going to do next is get half of my butternut, and I'm going to put that over the top, again, just in different places. So I'm now going to put some more of the tomato over the top, and I'm going to put another layer of pasta over the top of this. I'm going to put the rest of the spinach mixture over the top of this. So you want to put the rest of your butternut over the top of this and then you want to finish with a layer of your tomato sauce. You want to cover it with foil and bake it for around 30 minutes at 180 degrees. Then remove your foil and grate about another 60 grams of cheddar over the top. Turn your oven up to about 200 degrees and bake it for another 10 minutes or until it's golden brown and piping hot throughout. And then all that's left to do is dish up. Now this is one of Steve's favourite lasagnas now. He doesn't ever want me to make the one with mince anymore. He just wants to eat this. I also left a portion for my mum on her doorstep. And she thought it was amazing as well. And that was even with the mistake of not putting the cheese into the mixture. But like I said, it's completely up to you. You do it how you want. If you want to add the extra cheese, you can. But it really didn't need it. And it's a little bit healthier without it. So just put some cheese on top and it's fine. So as part of Jake's food tech homework, he had to research a recipe and make it on his own. So he decided, being Jake, to make pizza. So he just made his own sauce and everything. He did some crushed garlic, some passata. He also had some tomato puree and some basil. And he cooked that in the morning and just let it cool. Then for the bases, we couldn't get flour, but we could get pizza mixes. So he just used those, you add water to them. And he used two of those because he was making it for everybody. And then he basically just rolled it out, covered it with tomato puree and put as many toppings as he could on the top. You know what boys are like when they get into the meat bits. He put meatballs, there was pepperoni, there was mozzarella, there was grated cheddar and he had such a good time doing it and they turned out amazing actually and one day I'd like to get a proper pizza stone that goes on like our Kadak barbecue and I think that would be really nice to make our own pizzas and like cook them outside on a pizza stone and anyway this was really really good I was very proud of him the sauce was amazing actually and it's not one I'd ever made but he researched all the quantities and everything himself so yeah well done Jake and I'd like him to do it more often without any help at all because it was just brilliant to set the camera roll in and walk off and come back to this so well done Jake so that's it for this week I hope you have enjoyed it like I said leave your questions for our Q&A down below and we'll try and answer as many as we possibly can subscribe if you're not already and give this video a thumbs up to let me know that you like it and that you'd like me to do more and I'll be back very soon in another video take care guys this is what we waited for